everyone to the Punk Rock Horror Podcast. I'm the Undead Matt, and I am joined on this bonus episode by the amazing Jimmy Debster. Welcome, Jimmy. What's up, brother? Good to finally chat with you, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I gave you the the Shatner intro, so I, I figured that that'd be appropriate. Since you're actually you're actually the first actor I think we've able to been able to bring on this year, just because it's a this like whole year has been a very muddled uh, mulligan in my in my opinion. I, I, I'm calling it a mulligan in general. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, one more, one month turned into two months, and then next thing you know, the whole year is just about out now. We're already in freaking September. It's ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> it's talking about time flying when uh, when everything's exciting and but not in the best way. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not going to look back on this year. Wrong timeline. Wrong timeline. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Jimmy, you're you're here to join me today to not only just talk about yourself and so listeners can get to know you, but we're also going to be talking about uh, the short film you're in called Box. And uh, again, I just want to say thank you again for coming on the show today and uh, and hanging out. What what brings you on today? What is Box? And and what got you into it? Oh God, Box is a, a horror thriller. It's been all over the place. It's been all over the world. It was. It's kind of crazy, man, because it, it really just was one of those projects that started out of pretty much out of nothing. It was just a couple of us guys getting together, my buddy Lee and uh, my buddy Brant, the DP, and Lee, of course, the director. We were all getting ready to make big moves pretty much around that time, two, three years ago, and we shot it. I was getting ready to head out to Atlanta, and they were getting ready to go where they were going their separate ways. And we said, hey, man, we had a month, a couple months, whatever. Why don't we just get together and do something, just the three of us? and kind of really see what we can do with it. You know, not really a big budget, just kind of rely more on like atmosphere and kind of old fashioned storytelling as opposed to like a big budget explosions or like cheap jump scares or anything like that. We really just kind of wanted to put all the stuff that we like to see in our favorite kind of genres and just kind of blend it together and, you know, see what we can come up with. And it just kind of evolved as time went on and became this, uh, this, this horror thriller, noir thriller. So bringing up the video again, I mean, you at a time of recording right now, this thing's already over at like uh, sixty four thousand five hundred and forty one views. Um, it's, it's half hour length, and like coming back to what you're talking about, you can definitely see that uh, there is an influence of a lot of type of different types of horror genres here and subgenres that we've even talked about on the show. Um, just to give a big description, really quick about it, just for the listeners, a man frantically dumps a body after committing an accidental murder. Frightened, he rushes home only to. Find in a large ominous wooden box on his doorstep and so you know already just like starting out it, it opens up with you you're right and, and you're in this car in it you're in this desert and uh, i mean there's a lot going on here there's uh, i don't want to spoil the whole thing because it is half hour and we do want people to watch it but you know there's definitely this uh, uh this love for atmosphere for it within the short film i mean uh w- was there a difficulty trying to keep that tone of that type of atmosphere with it No, not really, because originally we had planned it to be a feature-length film. It was going to be at least an hour, maybe a little bit over. Uh, We had an idea of where we wanted it to go, and we actually shot a lot more footage to make it to be about a feature. But once it come down to editing and we were cutting everything together and, you know, time was kind of flying by, because time is your enemy when you're shooting these things, you know what I mean? And uh, it was just, it was basically a time issue. And we said, why don't we just kind of construct it and kind of bring it down to its simplistic core and bring it down to its bare essentials and tell kind of like a hopefully visually kind of like enthralling, interesting story. Kind of, we, we had in mind like a, like a Tales from the Crypt, Tales from the Dark Side kind of type vibe, Twilight Zone kind of thing. And we said, why don't we just do it? We could bring this down to like a short and hopefully get everything across we wanted to get across. You know, we don't really need to make this a feature. So I'd rather, we, we said that we'd rather have like a really cool short as opposed to forcing a feature length film and we had a lot of footage that we didn't necessarily need so we just kind of boiled it down to what it's like i said what its bare essentials were and just kind of put it out and people seemed to dig it man it was just one of those projects it just happened like like i said we got together and it gave me a chance to do something that i don't normally get to do you know a lot of times i do a lot of uh horror thriller tv stuff or a lot of horror films and this gave me a chance to kind of act a different way almost kind of like a not so much a uh, a protagonist but you know the guy's definitely not really a bad guy he's just you know he had something that happened in his past and he has a hell of a time dealing with it 
I think it's really great that you and your friends are just like, hey, we, we want to do, we, we actually want to do something with horror. You know, we just want to do it. We don't want to make it this big over the top thing. We just want to do it because we have a passion for it and we love doing it. And going through just a little bit on the, on the comments on your YouTube uh, for, for the video, obviously there's always going to be the negative ones that say really kind of, you know, just, you know, it's internet stuff. So obviously there's always going to be those negative ones, but then you have these other comments in there that are a lot more positive that are just like talking about how haunting and how mysterious that the film makes them feel. Um, you know, one, one person said that, you know, it's, uh, it's a, it's very sad and an inter, and, and introspect psych logic horror it's so good and so you definitely it definitely seems like you really did kind of capitalize on it and when i was watching it i was just really more so in the same sense of that there was this very odd uneasy tone throughout the entire film and i could tell that that at least to me it seemed like that was the point it was supposed to be an uneasy unsettling uh type of ride and and i love when any horror creator does that i think it's great when any horror creator in general really capitalizes on those types of tones because i mean it, it's horror you know you're you're not always supposed to feel loving and you know spot and inspired it is supposed to be a kind of almost a violating somewhat vulnerable uh, type of atmosphere has that always been the type of acting you've always wanted to go into is doing films like that i think in this film that was obviously definitely our intention i mean horror is interesting there's all different kinds of ways you can go and you know there's so much content now and it's hard to keep people's attention so everything has to almost be kind of now you know to the point you know there has to be something to happen like in five minutes ten minutes and has to happen right away and we didn't really want to do that we leaned a little bit more toward the you know the ari aster type of film style and you know the the, the type of stuff that kind of take your time and let it kind of pay attention and, 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 you know, you'll be rewarded in the end if you go along for the ride as opposed to, you know, like I said, a lot of cheap thrills and loud bangs and, you know, that type of stuff. We won't, we didn't really want to go for that. And it's, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, there's people who watch it and they dig it. And of course there's going to be people who don't, you know, that's, ah, you know, it's too slow, boring. That's fine. One of the great things I like about it is uh, having been to film festivals and conventions and have seen it come out of screenings and, See people come out and you talk to them afterwards. And if you talk to 20, 30 different people, you're going to get, you know, all different kinds of reactions. Most of them are positive, which is really cool. And that's what's good about it is you could it's really open for interpretation. A lot of it, you know, you watch it and you're like, oh, this happened and this this is a metaphor. And you know what I mean? It, it's really crazy. And people come up to you and they tell you that stuff. And I, I love that. You know, whatever. We knew that if we did anything at all, we, we made something that got people talking. I love it when that when that happens. The only way I can kind of like relate to what you're talking about is when we have any listeners that come up to talk about episodes where we review movies or, you know, talk where we talk about certain subgenres of, of horror in general. So I, I get where you're coming from on that, but I don't know if you struggle with this, but I know we do, or at least I do sometimes. When you have, you know, amazing amount of, of fans and then who are just loving what you do and loving your movie and then, you know, just really telling you all these great things obviously that's that's what you live for you know that's that's one added part of it that's great you know it's it's fun it's it's a very kind of adrenaline rush moment to hear from somebody who saw something that you made and it received well with them but i sometimes struggle with giving a little too much time to naysayers myself do you struggle with that at all you know people who have talked negatively or, or described the movie negative light have you struggled with giving them a little too much attention if so what what have you uh, kind of uh, fielded that no i've never paid attention to that because uh it's interesting now we live in a time where you know the troll thing and the cyber bullying I haven't really experienced too much of that as an actor or as a, as a myself, just a person online, but you know, every once in a while, something will come along and you'll, you'll see somebody drop a comment and you know, that's, that's going to happen. I mean, not everybody has to love what you do and not everybody has to like you and, you know, put something out there. It's open for scrutiny and criticism. You know, art's going to be art and people are going to look at it. And they're going to say, yeah, you know, I'm not really feeling what this guy is doing and they're either going to leave it alone or they're going to feel the need to go on and, and comment. You know, it's funny because I've, like I said, I've, sat at tables and I've been at conventions and film festivals. And for the most part, the general consent, when people come out and they come up to your table, they talk to you afterwards. They, it's nothing but positive things. Pretty much. I don't want everybody to, to be like, yeah, I don't need to be, 
I guess I don't have an ego that's such where I need people to constantly come up to me or leave good comments because it's like, it's kind of like the old saying, it's like, if you're the best person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't really need everybody. Oh, sorry about that, Jimmy. I totally didn't mean to cut you off. I was more so just agreeing with you, adding on saying it kind of goes within that saying of uh, those that mind don't matter and those that don't mind uh, do matter. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, sure. and, and you know what, man, I, that I just kind of like adding into that too. I, I, I'm really glad that just have that mentality of just like, of, of, uh, nah, it's whatever, you know, it's art is art. And I think within the context talking about art, you know, I mean, even if it's somebody that doesn't receive, you know, a, a film well or a piece of art well, and they then continue to comment on it. I mean, maybe even if skew away, you can kind of look at that as actually a positive because when we make art and art is presented, art is supposed to, you know, cause reaction in a person. It's supposed to cause a movement. It's supposed to make you think and react. And and if you're uh, reacting negatively, it doesn't, you know, doesn't vibe with you, and you have to comment why it doesn't. Then didn't uh, it, I would argue that the art still succeeded in that point with uh, making you feel something. I guess it comes back to that the whole other thing, you know, uh, any publicity is good publicity in a way, even though it's not publicity, but I can't really think of how else you would put that. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, I, a lot of people say, oh, man, this sucks, you know, that I, I put a movie out and people trashed it and they hated it. And then there's like a few people who do like it. Some people pay more attention to the ones who did and they go with that. And I prefer me. I'm like, hey, you know, at least they've seen it. And they, I, I was able to elicit an emotional response of some kind out of them. That's at the end of the day, that's what we do. Filmmakers, actors, artists of any kind, you, you're you going to get that response. And if somebody comes up to me and tells me, hey, man, you know, that was the coolest thing I've seen. You, I really like your performance or I really like the atmosphere or whatever. That was a, I dug that little story you guys did. That's cool. And at the same time, if somebody ever comes up and says, like, you know, hey, man, this movie really sucked, you know, you suck, whatever, I'd be like, hey, man, you know, that's cool because you're going to get that. People are going <laughs> to – not everybody has to like you and not everybody's going to. You know what I mean? Well, I like it, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, a lot of people do. They seem to dig it. And, and like I said, it still blows my mind for something for something that we pretty much just kind of, you know, it came up with. It was like a last-minute – kind of plan that we just kind of formed as we were doing it is 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 really cool a lot of people have seen it um, we went with the kings of horror network last year they've been doing a good job blasting it out there as a you know especially now with the you know the freaking pandemic and everybody having time to everybody's looking for content and you know streaming and stuff like that so it was we made a good choice going with them they have uh, they got a pretty good selection of horror films. Oh, we'll, we'll shout out to them as well. Definitely check them out on YouTube as well, listeners. So before we before we say anything, I want to want to ask you, Jimmy, if you'd be willing to uh, humor me and play a horror game with me. Yeah, sure. Why not? I get a shot. Perfect. Awesome. So currently we are talking about Satanism and horror, and we're talking about how the history of it, how it came to be, and how it's influenced horror. And so we uh, came up with a game on for the first part of this episode uh, called uh, Losing My Religion. And so I don't know if you heard that episode by chance, but uh, if not, don't worry, I'll catch you up on the game. So the whole idea about it is that uh, Satanism was started by Anton LaVey way back, you know, in the 70s, 80s. The guy came up with this game and i want to ask you what is the religion you would create and what are three creeds that your flock would have to follow it can be about anything to give you an example i made my first choice about ash williams from evil dead well cody's made his about a, a, another horror icon too at the time and so uh what would yours be oh man that's a tough one i guess uh I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of... of we want uh, you to have fun with it. You don't have to make it super serious, I promise. <laughs> um, I like the idea of Ash. That's pretty rad. You, you like the idea of, of the Church of Ash Williams? <laughs> yeah, that's a great... I like that. I dig that. All right. Do you, uh, do you want to make your own creeds to it, or I can tell you what our creeds are, and you can uh, you choose to change them around, I guess, if you, as you wish? Yeah, I guess I would basically like, look, you know, don't kill each other, don't slaughter each other, just... Uh, don't hate each other for your beliefs. <laughs> just all just have a good time and be be, be excellent to each other, man, <laughs> as best as you can be. That doesn't sound like as much as Ash. It's more sounds like the Church of Bill and Ted. 
Yeah, it's a combination between it. It's Bill and Ted only with like it's Bill and Ted with horror undertones. <laughs> so, so is that how you would address your flock? You would uh, you would just come in into a uh, into the church of Bill and Ted, which I'm guessing it would have to be designed after a phone booth, right? And then that that would probably bring up some issues because you would have to actually deal with the Doctor Who fan base and be like, no, wrong phone booth, wrong phone booth. That's that that's the <laughs> church down the street. You know, yeah. and then uh, you, you, as you dress your flock for them, be like, be excellent to each other. <laughs> as you come out like neon esque '90s clothes, I, 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 I think you're onto something here. I think you're onto something. I think you need at least have one creed for it, though. What, what's what's one commandment that they have to actually uh, follow? Well, they definitely have to be into that kind of music, man. Anything from like the '60s to the '90s, maybe even some early 2000s. I guess not much though. I seem to be stuck in those. Decade, those three decades myself anyways, 90s teen. I'm like 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I think a lot more people would join any flock if they were able to do whatever they wanted all the time. <laughs> Just gotta do whatever you want. I like it. So, uh, so Church of Bill and Ted modeled after a phone booth, and the main commandment is do whatever you want. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah, right. Why not? I mean, that's pretty much what we got now anyway. Everybody seems to be doing whatever the hell they want. <laughs> so I figured it wouldn't be too far too far off the grid from what, you know, reality. I'll wrap it up here on this last one. What would happen if somebody decided to listen to music that they came out in 2010s? Would they, uh, would they be kicked out of the church or would they have to be disciplined? <laughs> would they have to atone oh, man, for their sins? To be def- yeah, I mean, like 2010, I'm trying to go back. I can't think of anything that I really dig that's come out in you know, the last even probably 10, 20 years. So like if somebody's coming in listening to like, I don't know, freaking uh, some kind of pop or, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, you said do anything you want. So I, I brought my Britney Spears records and my, uh, my, get the hell out of here. But what if it's a Britney Spears record from the nineties, which she, which she originally came out. No, that doesn't count. That, does, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. That's exactly what they would say, too. They'd be like, well, you said uh, anything from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. You know, well, I came in with NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, and Britney Spears. I said, nah, get out of here with that bubblegum shit. You know, <laughs> you know uh, it, when comparing to current modern religions on, on what's considered blasphemous and, and some of those uh, scriptures and books, you, it's kind of funny when you think about it. In the Church of Bill and Ted, uh, the, the worst thing you could do is listen to a pop album from the 90s. Like so, I just now imagine yeah, like no. like this uh this book that you have that, that I don't know what the I don't know what a if it would be like a document or a book for for the religion of, of Bill and Ted, but either way, like it just imagine just kind of like like one small page with one small text be like the only blasphemous thing that you can't do is listen to pop. <laughs> It's like its own little page <laughs> by itself, and I just like, I, I could just, it, and it, like, it would have to have some sort of like, oh, uh, like I feel like just because it is a religion, they would have to have some sort of like over the top type of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, like saying under it, like or may the or or be wary of the the flames of hell for they may burn your ears or something like that. Exactly, it would, exactly, bro. It, it would be a religion, so there'd have to be. It would have to be full of stuff that would be completely out of their mind and completely uh, hard to follow. Just some some shit that doesn't match up. But yeah, I don't know. I kind of dig that. I can go with that. We watch horror movies. We'll just have a good time. Do whatever you want. But no, get out of here with that '90s pop. Just get out of here. <laughs> that shit don't fly around here. So go down the street. Try the other one. There's no shortage of other religions out there. Go find one of them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. All right. Well, uh, thank you for humoring me on that. I, I really, you, you never know what's going to happen sometimes with uh, when we do games like this. And so I, I really appreciate you playing along with that. Coming back to it, um, so this the mid length film it's it's gotten you know a lot of awards in our house thriller and you know it's just this really fantastic like like what we've already been talking about in a sense a, a passion project that came to life and and it's it's done a lot of things. I mean, has this been your first foray into acting or have you always known that you always want to be an actor? No. Um... Living in Florida, I was I, I got started there like around 2012 or 2013, somewhere around there. I, I get lost over the years. They were shooting a project in, in Florida, a zombie film called Rockabilly Zombie Weekend. And a buddy of mine messaged me. He says, hey, you know, they're shooting this zombie film out there. Do you wanna, might want to go out and check it out? They're looking for actors and zombies and stuff like that. I said, yeah, hell yeah, man, because I'm an old school Romero guy. You know what I mean? I've, yeah. you know, God, love the, the genre. And at, at the time... 
it, it wasn't really overexposed as much as it as it's gotten. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, good. Oh, no, I was just, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah, you know, we've actually talked about on the show, too, that how uh, sadly the zombie genre has been due to two things and shows like The Walking Dead has caused such an overexposure of the genre. It's not as as fresh as it used to be. And when you take a moment to step back, it's it's not not to go too far off on it on a side talk, but, you know, it's when you take a moment to step back, it's it's kind of a, astounding how overexposed it has been because when you think about it, you know, uh, people coming back from the dead, ripping flesh off the leave, living, eating them, a disease just, like, taking over the world. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's pure nightmare fuel. And... But we've gotten so used to it in modern media, seeing it as a theme and whether it's children's, you know, stories or again coming back to The Walking Dead or Prefla video games that it's always used in. Uh it's just kind of become something that we've been exposed to way too much and so now it's done as fresh and it's this is really interesting because you would think something as terrifying as undead creatures eating the living would would still maintain a terrifying uh, element to it but uh, apparently not so uh they, that's always been interesting but i'm so sorry uh jimmy i totally didn't mean to take that from you yeah then you know over the, they've been all over the place with that i think as, as far as they can go they've been slow zombies with romero then they were fast zombies with like 28 weeks and 28 days. They've been every which way. I mean, there's only so many places you can go with it. But at the time when this was brought up to me, like the vampires were still big. It was still all about Twilight. And yeah, that was completely dominating. The, and like I said, I'm an 80s kid. So I'm old school vampires, man. Near dark, lost boys, you know, that type of thing. So when, you know, that was that kind of was running its course at the time, the, the new sparkly vampire. <laughs> And it was kind of on its way, on its way out the door by that time. So I was like, "Oh, cool, man! Zombies are coming back around again." And it wasn't too overblown by this point. And Walking Dead was only on the air for like about two years or so at the time, and it was huge. At the, and I was like, "Yeah, let's let's check it out." So I, I went down. I, I went in, and I said, "Yeah, I could be a zombie or something. You know, why not? What the hell? I'd love to do that. Get some practical effects put on my face and just be a zombie." And <laughs> When I went in, it, it turns out it was a live casting call, and having no experience whatsoever, I went in and they took one look at me and they said, "Oh shit, man, you got to come in and you got to read for this character." And you got to—they had me read for like two or three different characters, and I'm like, "A read? What's a read?" I had no fucking idea what was going on at the time. I had no idea about reads and sides and stuff that they, you know, actor terminology. They gave me these papers and they go, "Here's these sides, you know, memorize them and then come in and do the read." And I'm like, "What the hell did I walk into?" <laughs> I'm like, what the hell am I doing? You know, I had no freaking idea what was going on. So, uh, I went in, did the reads, which, like I said before, were probably the worst reads anybody's ever done in their life. And uh, not having any idea what the hell I was doing. But about a, a couple days later, I got a call from the producer. And she had, they asked me, say, hey, you know, we like it. Would you like to come out and work on this project for a little while? You know, as a zombie, we'd maybe even feature you. And I said, yeah, what the hell? And I was on set for that, you know, two nights, I think it was originally. And that turned out to be like two or three weeks straight of filming, you know, a couple of days during the week, every weekend, night into day. And it was just from there, you just you meet people on set. And from there, you know, you start talking with other people and they're doing other projects. And I would pull people on to that project. And then they pulled me on to one of their projects. And it was just a snowball. And I really, really dove in head first when it came to that. And I was just. I was just completely, and I was like, man, I love this. I was watching the principal actors, and I was like, I want to have lines, and I want to be able to create a character. So it just snowballed from there. And that, that led to, you know, it opened up, like I said, opened up the Pandora's box and, you know, take some classes and some uh, incentive intensives and stuff like that and find an agent and, you know, this crazy thing we, we call acting. That's how it all started. You got a small taste of what it's what it's like to be on set and to have to be there for long. Well, it seems like a short period of time, um, but it still sounds long just because even experiencing two nights, you know, having to be there, you got a taste for it. And then you just you knew that this is what you wanted to do. And so you jumped on it. And I think that's fantastic. I, we always promote do the, do things that you want to do on, on the show. I mean, ironically enough, that also tends to be a part of the commandment for the Ted, uh, Bill and Ted religion. But... Uh, <laughs> But but we really do. We promote, you know, what, whatever drives you, what's your passion, chase it. Chase what makes you happy in life because, you know, 
passion plus hard work does equal results. And, you know, we always want to hope that it succeeds and it makes it. But in order to even get that far, you still have to risk it. And, I mean, Jimmy, you, you, it sounds like you really did. It sounds like you have risked it. You know, you really took chances that might have not worked out, and so far they have. I mean, starting in 2012, I mean, how how has it been this far? Uh, it's been crazy, man. It really is the roller coaster ride that everybody everybody's like, oh, it's a roller coaster ride. You know, you, you're going to have peaks and valleys, and there's things that I wish I knew earlier on, you know, that, that I know now I had to learn kind of like that's – but that's just me, man. I, I put that all on myself. I'm kind of a do-it-yourself kind of guy. I, I can't listen or like read. Like even playing guitar and playing drums and I'm singing now. That's all stuff that I had to do on my own. If you don't mind sharing, what was one of those things that you uh, wish you knew then that, uh, that you now know? Well, in the beginning, I wish somebody would have told me that, uh, you know, you're not going to get every audition to go out on. A lot of people don't realize that. I tell a lot of people, you know, everybody sees the cake that's baked. They don't see the eggs it took to break to make it. You know what I mean? Everybody sees the TV show you did or the DVD or, or the short film or whatever it is, or but they don't see the hundred or multiple hundreds of auditions that you go on in, in between that time, like in the shadows. Not a lot of people talk about their auditions that they're going on. I see some people do, but I I can't do it. I'm like, I'd rather just wait for it to happen. If I get it, cool, then we'll proceed from there. But I don't, I've never seen the point of telling everybody what I'm doing. I just kind of would rather do it, get it filmed. and Because there's also... Nobody tells you that, uh, you know, like I said, you're going to go on a lot of auditions and this is for the actors out there that are listening that are getting into it or, or that might be, cause I've just recently talked to a guy who was feeling down and out about, he scored a, a big gig on a major show, like about a year or two ago and he hasn't worked since. And yeah, I mean, a lot of it has to do with what's going on now, but you know, he was about a year or so where he wasn't just getting anything. And it's like, that's how it happens that way, man. A lot of times people get a big gig and they think they're good. Oh, I'm good, man. I could quit my day job. You know, I'm going to be working. I'm a working actor now. It's like, yeah, don't, don't, don't quit your day job, man, because the reality is, is it's going to go, like I said, in peaks and valleys, it's, it's going to go up and down and you're going to be hot for a couple months and then you might not get nothing. I've been through it too. I, I did a, I did a TV gig when I first got to Atlanta. I did a, my first co-star gig on a major series and I didn't work for pretty much the rest of the year. And yet you still, and you still come back to it though. Yeah, one, one, like once you're, I think once you're hooked, you're hooked. You know, it's it's once you realize that that's that's how it's going to go, and you could you're comfortable with knowing that you're not going to get every audition you go out on, even if you think you're like I've had people message me like, man, I fucking nailed that audition, I did so good, and I've been there too. I've felt that you walk out of the room, you're like, yeah, that went pretty good, and your first reaction if you don't get it is always going to be, oh, I, I sucked or they didn't like me or maybe I should have done this. I, I didn't do that or I, whatever. It's like, it's, I, I've, I've gone on auditions that I've walked out of the room and said, well, I probably didn't get that. And then a lot of times that's the one that you nail and they call you and they say, Hey, you know, we liked you and you get the part. And then other ones you go in feeling good. And it's just so not, it's so out of your hands, man. It, it's really just best to go in do it. Whether it's a live in person in the room or a, a video. Now the, the, the home tape and the self tapes are really popular now, but it's just best to just kind of do it, send it out. And then hopefully there's another one. You could just kind of stay busy. Uh, if you do a tape or if you do an audition and dwell on it for too long, you know, you can go out of your mind. You can go crazy. <laughs> I, I like hear you talking about this, and I like hear, hear, hearing your perspective because it is a sobering one. I mean, you know, it, it's uh, it, a lot of people. I think a lot of times, and you know, and, and I can't speak for other podcasts or any other content creator in general, but I think you know when when guests are brought on that have done higher end or higher budget films, you never really get to hear about what they've had to go through in order to get to that point and, you know, what those highs and lows are. And I mean, Jimmy, you're, you're living it and yet, and you're being a total badass about it too. Like all, all compliments in regards towards you, man. I mean, you're, you're doing something that can be very stressful and can be very overwhelming, but you're taking it from what it sounds like to me, even it sounds like you're taking it by the horns and you're saying like, okay, well, for every low, I'm going to keep pushing with it because if you don't keep the cement stirring, it's just going to harden and stick. And so you, and, and you, and you keep pushing forward, man. And, and I think it's really, really wise of you to, you know, pick up a lot of these uh, things early on in, in your career. The fact that just because you do get one gig, you get one victory, um, you shouldn't get comfortable with that and you shouldn't 
you know, just settle and 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 stop there. You should keep pushing for it. it. That I think that needs to be talked about more these days. We need definitely need to start talking more about continuing to push forward even when you succeed at something. And uh, and Jimmy, it sounds like you're the perfect example of that. Yeah, man. I mean, it's true. It's so true. Especially now we live in like an instant gratification society. Pretty much everybody wants to put a picture up on social media and then like get they want a thousand likes in like one day you know what i mean oh i i I get you we we catch ourselves in that i even catch myself in that every now and then whenever uh we make a post and if it doesn't land well and doesn't you know and and gets like you know like two likes then you know we step back and be like why aren't people liking this they need to like this you you have that moment and then you gotta it's those moments you really have to be self-critical of yourself and check yourself and take a moment to step back because because i'm also a big proponent Component of don't expect anything but appreciate everything you know and so yeah. and, and 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 again it's just really sobering and i think it is good to talk about this because again we we get into those moments and it happens you have those instances where you're just like it was like everybody should be liking this but that's not the mentality that you should have you know and whether it is you know posts on facebook or, or tweets or you know instagram stuff like that or you know even just things that you're putting out you know it's it comes back to what you said earlier on man you know you can't please everybody but you can only hope that the content you're making the stuff that you're doing is received well by other types of people and that those people do come and they do support you and they uh, come to talk to you about why your movie is great and and what they got from it. It's those types of moments that really, really help with the momentum of keep pushing forward with it. Yeah, that's that's definitely helps out as time goes on. Because uh, I, I mean, like I said before, it's like going back to box. When the film came out and people watched it and they dig it, and when people come up to you or if they message, they comment and they say, "Hey, you know, I really dug the film." And if it's these are people who don't know you, you know, and you don't know them a lot. Nine times out of ten, it's somebody from wherever leaving a comment. It, it's not anybody who really knows you personally. It's more than likely just it's like, wow, man, you were able to touch this person on a on a level that you, you said something or you did something that kind of reached out to them. Like you mentioned the comment. I know the comment you're talking about. I, I had the lady ask me. She goes, wow, you really handled the, the psychology and the psychological breakdown and the pain very well. You know, I myself, she was telling me, have gone through something like that. And just the way you handled it was really spoke to me. And that's something that's priceless. You can't, you can't get that from the fact that you can get that from somebody who is a total stranger and has no stake in the outcome and isn't trying to just be nice because they want to home or they want to get something out of you. They're not your parents or your friends. You know, that stuff is cool. But when it's a total stranger and somebody who has nothing to gain coming out and taking the time to watch what you do and to comment or even tell you you suck, I don't care whatever it is, just the, the fact that they took the time to acknowledge it is speaks volumes to me and i I dig that yeah because again it's it's they had to let you know in some way that your art affected them yeah man yeah absolutely and i love that and i think that's that's why we do what we do absolutely i i I, some kind of a response i i can only uh agree and relate as far as a as a as a podcast host can relate so i i definitely understand where you're coming from i'm not trying to make it about me but i just i do get where you're coming from um seriously jimmy this is great talking to you you know i mean i i feel like i could just continue talking about uh psychological uh influences and horror and all these types of stuff um you 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 definitely got a big head on your shoulders and you got a lot of great ideas and you got a lot of creativity going around man and uh I think Box is a fantastic short little horror film that a lot more people do need to check out. Let's see if we can get that 64,000 up to 100. You know, let's let's keep pushing those numbers up. You know, uh, Jimmy, uh, sadly, though, we do have this wrap up the show for the day. Uh, but before we head out, I want to thank you again for coming on and hanging out with me and taking the time to talk with me. It's been great getting to know you, man. Where can people go not only just to support the film but also support you? I'm on Instagram, uh, Real James D. I think is my handle. I get on there. I try to get on there a couple times a week. Uh, anybody could reach me there. They could instant message me, whatever they want to do, follow my stuff. I mean, whenever something's out and I get a clip, I, I try to put it up there and share it as best I can. And imdb.com, if they want to check out anything, I'm on there as well. A couple projects coming up we have. I just wrapped a film called The Fury, which is like a, an, a throwback to the gritty kind of action thrillers of the 70s and 80s which is a really good film. Stars Lilo Broncados in there from the, the film of Bronx Tale. Uh, that's a really good kick-ass film that's coming out. I play a character called the Ghost Killer. <laughs> That'll be really good. 
Um, and actually, we're just finishing up now. Next month, I go back and I pick up on Killer Babes and the Frightening Film Fiasco, which for all the horror fans out there, oh, my God, the, the, I, I sent you the link. The cast on that is unbelievable. We're, we're talking about Debbie Rashan, Linnea Quigley, Lisa Wilcox, Jenna Cannell, just Emma Bellamy from The Strangers, Pray at Night, just such a killer cast, directed by Brett Mullen, who's just a fantastic filmmaker. I love that guy. Love the hell out of him. Uh, if you ever, ever haven't seen any of his work, I'm so bloodbath, you know, check it out. Oh, he's really cool. That's going to be the kick-ass. So that's basically the like a, a, a horror convention come to life all in one film. <laughs> which is what that film is going to be for sure. <laughs> That'll be out probably next year. Uh, we were supposed to have it done by this Halloween, but with COVID and all that, you know, things happen. So we're looking to get that out next year. But uh, yeah, definitely check that one out. Well, you hear there, ghouls, gals, creeps, and moons alike. Check out Jimmy. Give him some love. Give him a follow. Check out Box. Check out the new projects coming out as well. We're going to have links to uh, as much of that as all that as we can possible in the description below or on, on YouTube in that description too. Um, again, Jimmy, thank you, man, for coming on and hanging out with me. It's been great getting to know you as well. Any other parting words you'd like to give all the ghouls, gals, creeps, and moons before uh, we close out? Yeah, man. Just keep doing what you do and listen to the Punk Rock Horror Podcast, man. The best damn podcast going today. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I had that. I enjoyed it, man. I had a good time. Like I said, I wasn't, wasn't planning on doing nothing today, but I'm glad I was actually finally able to get on uh, the chat with you. Uh, same here. All right, man. Thank you so much for coming on again. Uh, ghouls, gals, crazy immunes. Again, check out Jimmy, check out Box, and we will have another bonus episode for you next time. 